All right, let's do a share and video file, share screen. Uh, share screen, let's get out of here. All right, here we go. Okay, so I can see it there. So when you're running, you got the thing up. I'll put it up on the screen. Okay, so we'll do Bobby. So let's do, so because I, I, I did get a chance to read the article, so I have the background. We're going to be talking about the C55 set. If you could give the Coles Notes version, it is one of the early hockey sets. A similar allegory, not the same, not exactly the same, but similar conceptually to like a T206 set of baseball in the yeah. same general era. Yeah, you... very much the same. You know, I, I, well, the article I sent you was mainly about the Walt, uh, Walter Schmale, uh, which, you know, he had a variation done. And what the comparison was to the Sweet Caprols that were issued in 19... Uh, 11 uh and they also issued the cards exactly the same but they actually took away from um uh, the original uh photos that were on the uh, the postcards and they put them on card yeah. in that point point. and i think the way i would present it is that so on the left we have the sweet sweet capital postcard which was the inspiration for the image on the right yes but then you can see that there's some variations they took some artistic liberties let's say with they did up. They did with many of them. And I'm going to go through them from number one to 45. And we'll just look at the variations and take it from there. And once I get to the Walter Schmale, I'll explain a little bit about that one. Um, so here we are, you know, basically we have uh, Patty Moran. Um, most people don't know their names, uh, but, uh, you know, these are all top respected uh, players uh, of their time in the 1910s. Uh, there was only, what, three issues issued 19, uh, 1909, 10, 10, 11, and then 12, 13, which was the, um, the C-57s. So, uh, so we have Patty Moran. We can see where he played and how many times, you know, how many different teams he played with Haley, Burrell, and Quebec, and the Montreal uh, Athletics. Uh, so we have Joe Hall. Another uh, very well known, um, and they look at what they did to him. They it, it seems like they tried to incorporate a stick, um, maybe to get away from the lacrosse. A lot of these guys played lacrosse, so I think they tried to get away from the lacrosse. Even though the uh, sticks are here in the design, I think they tried to get away from the the basic uh, because they both they played both sports. They tried to get away from that and just to make it more hockey. That's why they put the the arms there and a stick going across there. Now, question, quick question while we're talking sure. about it. So for the backs there, uh, in contrast, like I said, example to the – we I use the T206 just because it's the most commonly known for baseball. Yeah. It's a very mm -hmm. common issue. For obviously in this one, in this issue, we get hockey players, we get the name, we get some biographical information, some history sure. of the player, and card numbers, which differs, of course. Mm -hmm. Is there any reference to – a? It's hard to see, but is there any reference to like a manufacturer or anything to it about who it was produced for? You know, it's really kind of funny because we did talk about the uh, the printing stone before that it was yes. issued. We finally find out that uh, the first issue was uh, through the printing stone and they had cow and chocolate. So we, so we knew it was Canadian. Okay. Uh, this is the only issue, which is kind of funny because the C-57, which is the, the third year, it duplicated the 19, uh, the C-56s. Um, very much the same, which is the first year, uh, 1909-10. They duplicated the backs. Now, this year looks very English to me. Like, a lot of people said, well, why did they look English? Um, you know, I think because on the back of the Sweet Capital cards, it says made in England. Now, I think that was just the uh, the paper stock was made in England. The pictures were, you know, they ordered the pictures, then they got the pictures produced here in Canada. Uh, we haven't found any information on that, and it's very rare to find any information on, you know, who produced them uh, at this point. We know it's Imperial Tobacco, uh, but we don't know how these were issued. The, C, uh, the Sweet Capitals or the um, uh, the postcard photos you see on the far left there, uh, we believe that they were issued publicly. However, there's a very limited set, so we... A lot of people have said that they were issued by um, teams, uh, by the, the team itself, and only to the players. So how many players there are on here? How many we have? 45. So they think there's only 45 sets known. But we have seen postcards written, so we really don't know 100% on yeah, that. Paul, make, Paul makes reference to kind of what you're talking about as well. So What's that? They're, they're strikingly similar to English tobacco cards. Oh, the backs are, for yeah. sure. 
Yeah. The, exactly. the other ones aren't so much, but this one is. And I've always said that. Now, does that mean anything? Not necessarily, because we know the printing stone was found on the C55, which was the first year. Okay. Now, this is the second year set. Uh, they look very English. However, we don't know. Why would they be printed in England, shipped over here when they did the first year here, and then they would sub it out to England? It doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense. Sure. Okay. Just say. So, Bill Holden, we have Joe Malone, um, very popular star. And you can see how they, uh, the graphic artist here, the hands look contorted. They, yeah, there's a, there's the worst example. We'll get to, <laughs> but I think I think the I think the main the main concept here is whenever we look at the left and right, is that we see those those artistic liberties because in almost every case it's like the guy's arm is to his side, but then suddenly it's in front of him. Well, I think they wanted to add this stick because they wanted to get away from the lacrosse. But even yeah. still, that could be a lacrosse stick too. On top of that, but it could be, you know. Yeah. Uh, Ed Oatman, uh, another great, uh, another great star. Um, played for Waterloo in 1909 and came back 1910 and 11. Well, I think the first thing that uh, a lot of people don't realize is that the first cards are the C55s, uh, C56s, were issued in 1909-10 because the hockey season was a little different. And these were issued in 1011 and uh, C57s are 1213. So uh, they didn't have a big schedule of 80 games. I think they had like 12 or 14, 20 games, something like that. It was very small in the comparison. Uh, I think its name is Tim Dunderdale, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of these guys are very obscure, and most people have never heard of them. Malin is just another, uh, you know, McDonald. Um, who do we have? Fred Lake, a very popular player too, as well. Now, now we get into the um, the full size, away from the uh, the torso picture or the you know the upper body bust picture. We're getting into a full picture, and you can. And I think that's, the first, that's the first time it actually seems like an accurate representation of the left versus the right. Yeah. As the as the rest will, as you see, as okay. the larger pictures, you can see they're very much mocking the uh, the same picture from the postcard to the uh, the player card. It's it's almost like the artistic. Um, Liberty they had before was, was very poor compared to what they did now. So his stick is there, his hands on his hip, it's perfect. So uh, a little bit similar, but pretty close with Marty Walsh. And uh, number 12, we have Happy Shore. Very similar again. And uh, Alex Curie. Bruce Redpath, path, um, very good player as well. They did a really good rendition. I, I have to give them credit for the artwork that they did on the facial. It was, it's very close. The bodies are another thing, you know, the gloves and what have you. But the I, I think what's interesting good. is that sometimes it feels like they took an artistic liberty for absolutely no reason. Like if you look, the, yeah. angle, <laughs> the angle in the True. hands is, is only ever so slightly different than why bother? Yes. Exactly. There's actually no reason. Like it's it's a very slight difference in this one, but it's slight. But there is a difference. But the faces are quite well done. Sure. No, on that part I agree with you. But I, but I'm like, why in this case would you like here again? Why would you even bother? You put the stick in the middle instead of on the side. Yeah, I, right? I think. But his arms it, are crossed. It's the same. To give it that. more, you know, presence here, opposed to just down, up, and down. Right. So. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> well, this is probably the first time anybody's ever seen the Sweet Caprols compared to the uh, the C fifty uh, fives. Yeah, but it's one of those things. I like. I like to have a conversation with the artist. Like, really, did you did you feel like there was enough room there that the stick could have been exactly where it was? And it would be fine. Basically, you're right. You're right. And they just hey, it's 19, 1909, 1910. I, I what are you gonna so. do? Okay, uh, so we have Percy Lesueur. Now, I, I kind of skipped over one thing here. Percy Lesueur was actually, he was the announcer for the French version in the 30s. He was the announcer for the French of um, what a Foster U would do for Canada English, he would do for the French. So he was Radio Canada? Yeah. Okay. Well, he would do the announcing for the games in the French, you know, because they had the, uh, uh, at that time it was General Motors. Oh, okay. so, so General Motors would uh, would produce uh, through Foster Hewitt, and then uh, he would do the French side of it, and that's Percy Lesueur, which is P E R C E, 
which they have P-E-R-C-Y, the French spelling is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And La Sueur, Le Sueur, you know, it, it, it does change a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was very significant. So he looks a little different. Uh, pretty close. <laughs> I just thought it would be nice to tie that in there. Jack Derrick, uh, very famous star as well. And that, um, that, and that, that one, the, the stick is almost the correct angle. Like it's, it it's actually, It just seems random. Like sometimes yes, sometimes no. The hair is perfect. The face is actually very, very well done. I have to give them credit. These postcards are very unique for that time period. These postcards go for two, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, depending on who it is. I can imagine. Very hard to find. Now, do we say they they were limited? I have no idea. Uh, we don't know if they were issued only to the team families or we have no idea at this point, but there's very few of them around. Uh, Steve Vere, uh, another one born in Barrie, Ontario, played for the Wanderers, Montreal Wanderers, the Edmonton, Cobalt, Renfrew, all the teams that were the, uh, the NHA at that time, National Hockey League. Uh, Don Smith, another nobody, but uh, he's a totally different shot. Here you go. Look at that. He's holding a stick across. That'd be a great shot if it was here, but they have him holding with another contorted hand again. I think they'd have to back it all the way up for that to work. I think they would have. He'd have, he'd have to be kind of standing back a little bit in the background a little bit. But this does no justice just having his hand on the stick and a little bit of stick there. So no. it would have looked a little better going across here. So. Um, oh, there we go. Fred Taylor. He was a he was a crazy guy. A lot of people said that he was uh, quite a player. He was actually one of the best players of, of the time period. And uh, he looks strange in his picture there. They kind of normalized him a little bit here, but he had that eye thing going on here. It's kind of a, he, that guy's crazy, you know. <laughs> but notice no stick on that one. Not, actually, they did no, nothing to him at all. That's what uh, I mean. Like, I was saying, are, are we sure that that isn't the crazy? <laughs> it's like, it's, he's like, Fred Taylor will find you. If you do something weird with a hand contortion thing, he will find you. Yes. You don't want to screw with Fred Taylor. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, would you want to mess with that guy? I wouldn't. See, Bert Lindsay, they gave him a little bit of a hand. There. He was less crazy, so he gets the weird hand. He gets I that. guess. Yeah. Very passive. Um, L. Gilmore. I don't know his first name right now. Like to know him. He's literally slouched in the first picture. He, he looks a little chubby, but he's very thinned out here. So, so, I think it, so this is early Photoshop, is what you're trying to say? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Bobby Rowe, another great player. Redford. Redford was a very good team. Um, we have Sprague Cleghorn. He was a short print in one of the anonymous sets uh, back in the 30s. So. Okay. And then his brother, Odie Playborn, made it. And their father, their father played uh, professional hockey as well. Um, don't know much more beyond that. This is going back early, early stuff. There's very little information to share with that. Uh, Skeen Ronan. Um, that's a very interesting name. I don't know anybody named Skeen. Well, it also it appears that part of the deal here is that um, he doesn't know how to hold a hockey stick. Well, actually, he obviously doesn't hear. But no, no, but I mean, is in the other <laughs> picture, they're, impl they're implying he doesn't know how to hold a hockey stick because I don't know what the heck that is. It was the 10s that they played with little short mini hockey sticks. So here we go. Okay, we're at this point of Walter Schmale. Now, Walter Schmale is the only card in the set that actually they changed the design. If you look at his first issue, uh, his arm is kind of deflated down the, the left side and the right side, his hand is very contorted. It doesn't even look normal. So I think he must have complained and said, well, this is nothing close to my picture. And then they reconstructed and reissued his card um, with his hand. It's one's called hand on hip and then one's called hand on stick and hand on stick came after. So it, it's obviously rectified. They, they fixed up the artwork and they, uh, so he must've complained at some point in time. So that's actually, I think there's a 40 to 60% ratio. So 40% went through and then 60%, you know, they fixed it early on in the uh, production run. And then they went on to the, uh, the regular one. So there's not much difference in price, but there is something on the back. Um, there was a period and one without a period. 
So we have a difference between, um, you have to remember we're on printing stones here. Um, you know, some of the, um, the touche or the, the ink can fill in or the wax can fill in on the, the period space and it can be missed. So I think that was probably the, the problem with this issue. So people call this another variation. This variation only happened later on when they fixed it, when they fixed the, um, the hand on hip and did the hand on stick. So, so the, the two back variations are only yes, the corrected version. They are. Okay. Got well, it. the one is no, no, this one is, uh, this one's fine for the beginning. This is the, uh, uh, the one without the period is the one ladder. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people look into that because there's certain variations to cards, and I understand that, you know, there's a lot of uh, money on the line when people are looking at variations. Almost superfluous, but still significant to a degree. But we'll leave that one alone. That's Walter Schmale. And he's the main part of that set for the most part, other than the uh, the bigger cards, of course. Ernie Johnson, another great player. He looks like a brute at that point, does he not? And then you get into Jack Marshall, Harry Highland, Art Ross. There you go. Named the trophy after him, the Art Ross. So, that, so, yeah, this is one of the big ones here, name wise, that people would know that, you know, whose name is continued on beyond the player themselves. A lot mm -hmm. of people may not realize that it's like, nope, that was a person. And he played hockey back in the day. Yeah, the Art Ross was given to the uh, highest scorer at the end of the season or something. Yeah. Yeah. The old school scorer. Um, you look at him here, he looks it was point. It was points for, the points for the Art Ross. Yeah. <laughs> um, Riley Hearn. A cool name. Not too many people called Riley anymore. Um, I do think it's interesting with that one is that they also changed the... Uh, the shield on the logo. A little bit, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. A little tweak there. Yeah. Artist renditions. And same thing here. Mm -hmm. He's holding the hand in his... It's sticking in one hand and the other hand the other way. He's really got the big ears, though, so they're really pointing that out there. right? Well, uh, Hockey Guy had a little bit of a crack at one of the earlier players. He was saying that uh, he is holding a broom. He was a sweeper, a.k.a. Maybe. janitor. But here's the thing. Gordon here looks like he's holding a broom. He looks like he actually should be sweeping right now in the back. Yeah. Talk about primitive. Look, they have no shoulder pads. They have no... It's just a sweater, and I don't even think the pants have protection. It's I don't think so. Not in that era. No. But, but at that time, they're, they're using short sticks. They're about uh, 40, 40, 45 inches long. Very small. There's no slap shots allowed, and they didn't even invent the slap shot until I think Boom Boom came in in the uh, in the league. So you're looking at you know fifties. Um, so the puck really doesn't didn't come off the ice very often. So to have this upper protection, I didn't think they really needed it. But for slashing and what have you, I'm sure a lot of that went around. So that's why the gloves are probably predominant. Hand behind his back. Hands not behind his back. But a good rendition again, Fred Glass. Um, another good player. Um, Ernest Russell, I don't know much about him. He played for the Wanderers, Montreal Wanderers. Okay. They won a lot of Stanley Cups, that's for sure. A lot of the Wanderers players here. James Gardner. Arthur. Bernier. Um That one's superimposed there. You can see that, isn't it? And that one is too. He must have been traded late or something. Because opposed to other ones, you can see how this is imposed on there. On both pictures. The, so you're uh, saying it's an early traded set uh, update? It may well be, yes. Uh, it's rookie year, but not rookie. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and same thing with uh, George Vesna, one of the biggest cards of uh, all time, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, George Vesna is like the key card, I think, in this one here. He's the, he's the biggie. He is the certainly the biggie. Now, him being a goalie, it's kind of interesting. Well, goalies had two gloves. They didn't have blocker and catcher at that time period. So I'm sure there is um, a little something to adding that uh, stick there. I, I don't think you could differentiate the stick at that time. I think there was only one little bump at the bottom that made it a little thicker. But other than that, I don't think. Oh, yeah. Uh, 1911, Shikudami previously. He was called the Shikudami Cucumber. That's a heck of a nickname. And then you have uh, 
Dallary, I think his name is. Dallary. I don't really know his. Uh, this another guy who's very good pitcher, like very good uh, reproduction, but don't know him very well. Uh, don't know most of these guys, to be honest. Our Powers, I don't even know his first name. Some of them you do know, but... Um, Okay, he, Mr. New Zealand. Uh, oh, I got the wrong picture on the front. Oh, there we go. I screwed up. Okay. I knew there'd be a screw up at one time, but it looks like him, doesn't it? Is that an error? I was going to say, I don't know. I never even thought about that. Is that an error? D Petrie, D Petrie, and I have, oh, I got it where the long, oh, that's my mistake. Okay. So I got the wrong back there. My okay, opinion. so the back's different. Yeah, the back. Well, different. I think I think you can also see is the number not on the front as well. Uh, forty. Yeah, there is forty-two right here. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, that's wrong. So, my mistake. My mistake. So that's uh, whoever. Okay, so we had uh, New Zealand. Uh, his name was Eduardo, actually. Eduardo Lalonde. Okay. Hmm. Very interesting. He's actually named Eduardo in his uh, lacrosse card. Okay. Very interesting. But very big star. Uh, probably one of the top goal scorers of, the, of his time. Um, another nobody that we really don't know. EPN. Uh, Mr. Poling. No idea again. But there he goes. Superimposed again. A lot larger. I wonder why they did that. Hmm. His face also looks sort of airbrushed. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Chiseled, <laughs> chiseled chin here, and a little bit more rounded here. So, um, and the, the last one, number forty-five, Jack Labuinet. Yeah. So and for some we... reason, his head is more tilted. He a more... little bit, yes. I guess they had the picture tilted a little bit when he was drawing it. But actually, yeah, that's so. a great rendition if you really look at it. No, I think on the whole it looks accurate, but it's just kind of funny. Like it's like, yep. Yeah. And, 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 and also, he was a big fan. He was a big fan of the of being a chimney sweep as well. <laughs> yeah, very much. So. That seems to be a thing with some of these guys. Yeah. So, anyways, that's the end. There's 45 cards in the set. Uh, it's a great set. Um, obviously, the Vesna is the uh, the main key card, and um, I think it's like I said, one of the first times we've compared the uh, um, the postcards to the cards being distributed in, in tobacco. Yep. And what uh, year are the uh, what year are the Sweet Capital postcards? Same year. Okay, so same year, and these are the inspirations for the images in yes. the C55 or C56? This is C55. Thank you, C55. Yeah, 55, although it's not the first issue, it's the second issue, uh, because um, the American Card Catalog and Jefferson Burnick, he didn't really do it by date. He just did it by number. Yeah. And unfortunately, he had 55 before 56, and that's just the way it worked there. Fair enough. Sounds good. That's it. Awesome. It's all there. Drop it off. It was interesting. I, I know what you said it originally to me to do the little comparison side by side. It was kind of fun to see the comparison of the players uh, to the other image. Because uh, you don't always get to see the the image that is the inspiration for. Yes, kind of makes it kind of makes it interesting in its own way. And obviously, early hockey series and famous set like big time uh, iconic cards because the uh, the Vesna I think is in the uh, what they call the Mount Rushmore. Like PSA has its registry, and the Vesna is one of the four cards that constitutes the Mount Rushmore. Deservedly so. It's yep. a big time card. Without a doubt. So it's one of those ones where, because hockey doesn't have the pre-war presence of like a baseball where you can pick a lot of different sets, but as far as iconic cards, that's one of them. Well, you said T206, very comparative. You know, you have to, you know, put it up against a few other T206 cards, which you can, well, I don't think you can put it up against uh, too many. Um, the Vesna you might put up against, uh, who would you put it up against in the T206? Uh, the um, I'm trying to think of the baseball. Mm. So you talk about in terms of scarcity or key card? Yeah, yeah, key card. Then it'd be the Honus Wagner. No, no, not the Honus. No, no, that's too far. That's, so uh, then maybe the Cobb. You could Cobb do one of the Cobbs. The uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, I can't think of the other guy's name. Jeez. Some of the other rarities in T two hundred six are Crawl, based. Uh, uh, 
I forget his name. Sorry about that. That's baseball, so yeah, I know hockey. Pitcher, pitcher, or something else? No, someone else. Uh, he's about forty, fifty thousand dollar card too. Uh, no, no. I don't know why I'm thinking crawl, but it's uh, yeah. There's a couple of there's a couple of condition scarcities that are not the same. The Wagner is the iconic card. But yeah. there are some other ones that are considered right there in that top echelon, but some of them are errors. So there's like a Maggie error. No. Yeah. Doyle is another one that is considered one of those top, top, top tier ones in that set. Mm -hmm. And I think there's one more that qualifies as one of the... I think it's the one more that uh, we're missing out on. Yeah, I'll find it. It's okay. Yeah, you got the Edward Lalonde, you got the Art Ross, and you have the Vesna. Those are your top three. The other ones are, you know, they all fall into... The, the medium, uh, there's a few in the lower, but uh, for the most part, a very iconic set, uh, very early stuff. Um, you know, obviously, again, uh, Printing Stone, uh, they look English, but they had to be printed in Canada. The funny part about it is the C57s, which is the year after or two years after, um, they went with the same backs as the C56s, uh, which is the first year, 1909-10. So it's it's funny how they changed. They they had the two backs which were exactly the same, the reverse with the cross sticks, mm -hmm. and then they went to a new design in this year, which very interesting. And then the sweet cap or postcards as well. And it says on the back the sweet cap or postcards that it says printed in England, which is you know that doesn't really mean anything. The Cowan tiles from nineteen sixty two they were fired in England because it says you know made in England, but obviously. The company redid them once they got them from England. So they were manufactured in England and, and then produced here with the the screening on top. Well, the screen art did the, uh, the the players' pictures. So as much as something was manufactured there, it was printed here. So the postcards were probably plain, and then they printed them here at that point. I think that's fair. I think that's good. Yeah. So the and it's fortunate the way they ended up making that set. Fortunately, because they didn't do all the ridiculous back variations and all that. It, it, if, oh, some, if, yeah, someone wanted to, if someone wanted to collect it, they would need deep pockets, but it is doable. Doable. Yeah. Because, yeah, the Vesna will cost you a pretty penny, without a doubt, but you don't have to worry about these weird conditioned uh, variants as well as far as back variants. No. Because you're going to have all these different variations for some of them. So the other ones were Joe Doyle and Sherry Maggie and also Eddie Plank. Plank. Yeah, so Plank like would be the, the yeah. he's considered the second most desirable card. Yeah. In the big four right at the top. Right in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but again, not cheap. I won't go that far, but it is attainable. If you're willing to cut the check, so to speak, then sure. you can get your hands on one. And a 45 card set, it's a lot less intimidating than the monster at 524. Yeah. Then it's, yeah, a different variation backs just kill that set. Uh, whereas the, you know, the, the hockey is pretty simple. One back. Very simple. Yeah, you just have to accept the fact that uh, some of the players took some artistic liberties. A bunch of random hockey sticks, a couple of brooms, you know? Well, they're two different issues. Things. So artistic liberties are sort of of the set. It doesn't really matter because they're consistent uh, through that set. Because we're comparing two sets here. Although one pitcher was based off the other set, I understand, but it, they're two different sets. Okay. How, the, how the Sweet Capitals were issued, we really don't know at this point. A lot of speculation. I Until we find real information, I, I don't think you can say, but there's very few around, and they go for a lot of money when you do find them. Okay. And they're, they're quite good, they're very quality, as you can see. And those aren't even high resolution. Those are low. Yeah. 